We got part three, Empress Catherine at last. Part one and part two already on the channel. If you guys want to check them out, links will be down below in the description. Empress Catherine at last. Let's go. For months, Catherine, together with one of her lovers, had been working with men high in government and the military to replace what they all saw as a disastrous and incompetent emperor. Yep. <laughs> They'd been slowly putting out bribes and winning the hearts of the local guard regiments in St. Petersburg. But on the night of June 27th, it all came to a head due to a slip of the tongue. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's just make let's just make Catherine uh, the queen and uh, let's be done with it. A soldier in one of the guard regiments we all in like Saint Petersburg gets spooked. He turns to one of his officers and asks if it's true that the conspiracy against the emperor has been found out. Turns out the officer he just asked is one of the few who was not in on the plot. The soldier oh, is shit. arrested on the spot, as is one of the guard officers who is central to the rebellion. The time is now or never. The revolt must begin. Oh, what an idiot! The principal conspirators gather, panicked. A man named Panin, a man who would go on to be one of Catherine's highest officials, stays them, saying their freedom could only be assured for a few hours, so they must act, and they must act now. The brother of Catherine's paramour is dispatched to Peterhof, the palace outside of St. Petersburg where Catherine's staying. He dashes out and pulls aside the first carriage he can find. Money makes the driver push the horses hard through the night. Meanwhile, Peter is asleep at Oranienbaum, a small post outside of Petersburg where he's staying to observe one of his regiments before- Wait, the... what? what? What's the plan right now? Is the plan to make her empress? Is that- His Danish adventure. The brother of Catherine's lover arrives just as Catherine is waking at 5 a.m. Okay. The time has come, he says. He quickly relays the night's event. Skipping all the elaborate dress of a high lady of the time, Catherine immediately rushes to the carriage. The horses are exhausted from the travel of the previous night, but as they are crawling down the road toward the capital, a farm wagon on its way to morning market passes. They stop it, and the empress consort pushes money into the farmer's hand. She has his two great farm horses tethered to her carriage right then and there, and they speed toward St. Petersburg. Out in the yard, Peter is making his small contingent of Holstein soldiers parade before That's him. That's how you go quicker. A messenger brings news of the arrest of the guards and the possible conspiracy. Peter shrugs it off. Oh wait, so they're actually trying to get rid of him and get her in place. One by one, but he's just he's just a well. Of each of the guard units stationed in Petersburg. One by one, the regiments swear fealty to her in a jubilous tumult. Meanwhile, Peter is playing violin in his room. A man rushes in to tell him he has a message about happenings in the capital. <laughs> Annoyed at the interruption, Peter <laughs> tells the man to put it on the table. He'll Bro, read this it later. guy don't care. He never does. Surrounded by guards, a procession with Catherine at its center makes its way to the Cathedral of Our Lady Kazan, where the Archbishop of Novgorod pronounces her sovereign autocrat of Russia. Meanwhile, Peter orders a caravan of carriages assembled to take him and his guest back to Peterhof to have a feast. He forgets to order the usual cavalry escort. How is he so oblivious to what's going on when so many people came up to him? Catherine and an ever-growing mob process to the Winter Palace. There she meets with assembled members of the Senate and the Holy Synod, the highest religious council of Russia. She declares that out of love for Russia and the Orthodox faith, she had been moved to such action. That, at the urging of her subjects, against an emperor who imperiled them, she took the throne to deliver Russia from foreign powers and foreign religion. Which, I mean, bold move, considering she herself was a foreigner who had come to Russia with a foreign religion, but hey, nobody was really sweating the details at the time. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter's group of revelers arrive at Peterhof, only to find no one there. Peter is furious. He storms through the house looking for Catherine. She spoiled his party. To one of his entourage, he screams in rage at her unthinking discourtesy. Didn't Bro, this I always guy. tell you she was capable of anything? A few of the more senior members of the party offer to head to St. Petersburg to see if they can find her. They had probably put two and two together by this point. The embassy from Peter's company arrives. See, like, what would happen if... He actually realized what was going on. Could he, could he stop it? Or? One of them begs Catherine not to take up arms against her husband. She takes him by the elbow and leads him to a balcony. Gesturing to the ecstatic crowd, she says, Deliver your message to them. The small group of messengers all swear fealty to Catherine, or ask oh, to be shit. allowed to retire. 
Meanwhile, Peter has gotten his first concrete news of all the goings-on from the crew of a firework barge that was sailing to Peterhof to provide the fireworks for his party. But all their information is still vague because they had left early in the morning, as they'd been ordered to go deliver the fireworks. See, this is what happens back in the day. So, like, and probably still happens now, but um, these are loyal to him because he's the current ruler, right? But because they're seeing that, you know, Catherine is taking, uh, is becoming more powerful, they're going to swear loyalty to her to make sure that they keep their jobs in the same positions. Peter, enraged, orders word to be sent to Oranienbaum to get his Holstein regiment. He shouts that he will defend himself to the death. His men arrive and are posted along the road to the capital, but no one thought to tell them that there might be a fight, so they only brought their wooden parade ground rifles. Oh no. A Russian uniform is found for Peter, because he was still wearing the German one that he liked so much. His advisors <laughs> gather around him. One counsels that he- I, Yo, this P is off his head. <laughs> on the uniform, ride at full haste to the capital and remind the people who they had sworn an oath to. Another recommends that he meet up with a larger contingent of the army 70 miles away and then march on St. Petersburg. A third recommends he flee to Germany. He does... You know what? Why does he not... Wait, does he go... Why does he not go to Germany if he likes it so much? Nothing. Men are sent to secure a nearby island fortress. This fortress is still loyal. At least this was good news. Catherine had gotten the backing of the Synod, the people, the army, and the Senate without firing a shot. But there was one last thing she had to do. Peter had to formally abdicate. As was the right of the sovereign, she had taken on the rank of the colonel of the Priobrzynski guards. Borrowing pieces of a uniform from any of the men who seemed about her Look, size, uh... she strode out to meet her soldiers in the brilliant green of the guards. She would lead the final foray to capture Peter herself. As the march began... So basically now the final plan is to get Peter and just force him. To make her empress. A young subaltern rushed up to give her his sword knot, the one piece her uniform yet lacked. This subaltern's name, by the way, was Gregory Potemkin. Peter, meanwhile, chose to withdraw to the island fortress he had secured earlier in the evening. As his boat approached, the harbor was closed off to him. He shouted to the men in the fort, Do you not know me? I'm your emperor! To which the reply came, We no longer have an emperor. Long live Empress Catherine oh, II. Shit. In the time between him sending his man to secure the fort and him choosing to finally go there, the top admiral of the navy had sworn allegiance to the new empress and headed to the fort to take over its command personally. Peter fled into his cabin to hide. When he returned to Peterhof, he dismissed everyone and then went to his room, refusing to speak to his staff. <laughs> then he composed a letter to Catherine, apologizing for his bad behavior and offering to share the throne with her. <laughs> At first light, Bro, this Catherine guy. receives Peter's letter. She is unimpressed. A few hours later, she receives another letter offering to abdicate if he could just go back to Holstein. She accepts. He writes an abject abdication statement detailing how unfit he is to rule. Needless to say, a few weeks later, he wound up dead in a drunken brawl that was probably a cleverly disguised assassination. Yeah. And his idol, the man he kept telling himself he was equal to, yeah. Frederick the Great, of the Oh, no, he 100% got killed. Fair Frederick he 100% said got assassinated. He allowed himself to be dethroned like a child being sent to bed. And while Catherine probably had nothing to do with Peter being killed, she did pardon his killers, as his death freed her up to rule without the worry that someone would try and form of a counter-rebellion around him. And rule she did, rapidly reversing almost all of Peter's policies. As Russian forces were literally on the verge of engaging with Denmark, riders arrived with Catherine's orders to return home. In fact, that was the order to all the Russian troops in Europe. She was going to begin an era of neutrality, where Russian troops fought on neither side of the Seven Years' War. And for this, the army was forever grateful. The church, on the wow. other hand, was more complex. She put a temporary moratorium on Peter's order to secularize all church land, but Catherine was intent on being an informed ruler. And as reports came into her every day, one thing became more and more clear. Russia was broke. Grain prices <laughs> were soaring, the treasury was filled with IOUs. Ending all the wars would help, but not seeing the reparations which might have been expected with a decisive victory, Russia was penniless and without any recourse to credit and easily a tenth of all the wealth of Russia was locked up in church lands. Wow. Wealth that her government needed. 
After a long back and forth with the Senate about the morality of a church which owned so much property but didn't help with the temporal affairs like charity and education, and with a few threats thrown in, Catherine was able to cow them. All church property became state property. More than a million church serfs became peasants, which meant they now had to pay taxes, and all church officials became employees of the state. And this shows the strength of Catherine. Where Peter lost one of the great pillars of the Russian state, and arguably his throne for his policy, Catherine's Man, she's actually a really fucking cool empress. Iron will and careful management of the other elements of power allowed her to drag in this vast source of government revenue. But in doing so, it also brought up the other great issue for Catherine. Serfs. Because serfs in Russia were slaves. They could be bought and sold, abused with no rights over their own bodies. They could be gambled away or traded. They had no choice but to work the vocation their master chose for them, and they couldn't move or leave the land that they were bound to. And with burgeoning industrial revolution, there came to be a new kind of serf. A serf not owned by a master, but owned by a corporation, many of oh, whom shit. were employed by the great mining enterprises of the Urals. And in these mines, life was ugly, brutish, and short. Because they were chattel, men were literally worked to death, beaten when they paused the for fuck? a moment in their labor. This treatment caused riots and strikes that would eventually lead to the largest peasant revolt in Russian history. So join us next time. Wow, wait, and that was under, like, um, Catherine's fucking rule? Plight of the Serfs, the ghost of Peter III, and the Pugachev Rebellion. Oh, shit. Well, that was actually a really good video. She finally made the Empress. Now it seems like it's gonna, like, turn for the worse. So, uh, yeah, part four is gonna be interesting. Part four will be soon. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series so far, and I'll see you all in the next video.